<laughs> that hurt. <laughs> Yes. Welcome to Straight Red Card. Now we're going to do player ratings before we go and do that. Um, I got to read the report on U.S. Soccer's website about the game. Um, the uh, It says, the first goal and superior U.S. possession throughout the match led to Canada playing a low block. No, you fucking dumbass. They started playing a low block. <laughs> yeah. From the so, uh, I don't know what you were watching for the entire game and challenged the U.S. men's national team to find a way to break down the sturdy Canadian defense, which often featured five players in the back. Canada were able to create moments of danger on the counter due to the elite speed of Laren and David, but nothing really troubled Turner until he had to make a double save late in the match. Um, mm -hmm. And then the USA maintained the majority of possession and attacked down both wings. Predictable! That's predictable. That's that shit you don't even need to write. It's so predictable. But the host did well to limit spaces and the unusually narrow field. Okay, now it's the field that caused the problems. And we're disruptive at the right moments to limit threatening opportunities, like barely any. <laughs> Forward Christian Polisic was active on the ball and was the recipient of a few hard challenges that broke up place. What the fuck are they talking about? Okay. Active on the ball, I mm. guess. A lot of things that he lost. From time to time, yeah. Yeah, I just, I don't get this. The guys that have to write this must want to slit their wrists afterwards because they've mm. got to get every syllable and every sentence perfect and make the right excuses. Or, I mean, they're going to say they're being factual, <clears throat> right? But why bring up the, I brought it up last game, <laughs> right? The width of the field. It's yes, but that's not an excuse. And I think even Greg in his interview today said, I'm not saying it's an excuse, but this is, you know, it was 69 no. yards so, wide. So no, it's it's not an excuse for the game. And we knew it was coming in. We could we could have adjusted our gameplay. But the fact of the matter is, Canada from from the style of play that they they played today to the field they selected was an advantage in their in their in their in their, in their favor. I mean, yeah. it was absolutely planned accordingly. Now the thing is, we knew exactly what field we were going to for weeks. We and knew yet, this. We did we the could same have, we old have, shit. Yeah, we we could have came up with a different plan. We could have came up with a different formation. We could have come up with a bunch of things. But instead, we're like. Ah, we'll just keep going back out there with that four three three. Play it out wide. Look for those crosses. I mean, it's shorter crosses, so we should be able to lob them right in there, right? <laughs> you would think so, but that didn't work out, did it? Um, and it never does. We're just horrible at crossing, and we're horrible at having more than any more than one person in the box at any given time to put that head on that ball. So good luck with that. Um, and if they do come, it, they're usually late arriving, like Robinson's goal. They got there late, but he was there because the ball kind of bouncy bounced around and then it came straight to him and he finished it in the game against uh, El Salvador. But other than that, I mean, I'm nervous. <laughs> and, and then Greg called, he said in the interview, our fullbacks are our superpowers. What the fuck's what? A superheroes? Superstars? Superpowers? What the... I don't... They're superpowers. I've heard people having superpowers. Maybe that's what he meant. I don't know. I'm being critical because I'm, I'm fucking pissed right now. Because we just lost to Canada 2 nothing. There's just no way that should have happened. And I don't care about the field. I don't care about 69 yards wide. I don't care about any of that shit. You knew that going into it, buddy. Mm -hmm. You knew it. And you made no adjustments whatsoever. Um, so I guess we're going to have to rate these these poor players. Well, yeah, we, we we talked about this kind of off air, but it's it's rough to have to rate them because it, it the system we went went into that match with just did not play to our advantage. No. So I mean, sure, we're gonna give them some ratings and we'll see what happens. 
we'll see what happens. It's not going to be easy. I already did it today using mm-hmm. Filippo's 10 to 1 system. And, um, mm-hmm. But you guys by now probably know our rating system. So if somebody gets a B, you know, don't fly off the, the handle if you think mm-hmm. they deserve an F. Because as we say, if I brought a C home to my mom and dad when I was in high school, that would be bad. Very bad. I mean, they wouldn't beat me or anything. That's not what I'm saying. But they'd be very unhappy. So um, let's just go to Turner. I have to give him a C because he he screwed up the first goal. That was that was mostly well, his fault. I think he, at least fifty percent his fault. Goalkeeper one hundred and one. If there's a if there's a crosswind, especially if it's going against you, don't lob it high up in the air. Yes, so, especially I mean, when. You- when Especially when your midfield is spread out to the wings, the, the, the wider sides of the field, because they think we're going to build up out of the back. And then you just whack it long, and it's so short, the guy one times it up to fucking, was it Laren or was it uh, David? <clears throat> Doesn't matter. They mm-hmm. tick it up, pick it back up, goal, Canada. It took, it took three mm-hmm. one-touch passes for the goal to occur. Yep. So It just exposed us, essentially, Matt. And then... You know, he didn't look particularly that comfortable for after that for the rest of the game, frankly. He didn't have much to do, but he didn't look that comfortable. I mean, he, he, had, a, he had some, he had, some, he had some, a couple of okay in quality, or I see some relatively quality, um, longer passes today. Um, what, but what had, about he had, he had more time as a whole because obviously Canada wasn't pressing high, right. Right. So, so I mean, if we you get, could, get moments, I'm sure you can lob a nice ball. But it, what know. about that first goal where he got like two inches off the ground? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what but, happened? Did he not get a good push off? Because well, the thing was the commentators were like, oh, there wasn't much that he could do. I'm like, well, yeah, he could have jumped. <laughs> like there I mean, could have been like a little more <laughs> spring to his step. It's like, he sort of just like, sort of like, fell over you know to the side <laughs> i don't think his feet actually left the ground yeah you could have you could have actually you know jumped a little but i mean i i, I can't say this because i mean i could i can argue this from my couch of course but maybe he's thinking differently maybe he's thinking that maybe the ball is going to go a different place and he had to kind of react and that's all he could perform i don't know you know but, he was standing around a lot before that and I mean, as a goalkeeper, man, I'd hate to be a goalkeeper because you're just standing there. Fuck yeah, no, nope. I, I standing I there. I play in the goalkeeper a little five bit. Five degree weather, yeah. I play goalkeeper yeah. a little bit, and I uh, hated every moment of it. But it was that, or nobody played it. I mean, <laughs> so. yeah. I mean, sometimes I had to play it when I was five, and I hated it. Um, but I gotta say, that is not the normal Matt Turner I know. I mean, Matt Turner usually plants and he's ready to jump either side. And he may have gotten like three inches off the ground on that one mm-hmm. at best. I mean, it looked like um, white guys can't jump or something, <laughs> you know, it really did. That's what it looked like. And I think uh, other people have commented on that since. I think he should have got a hand on it. At well, least I mean, he did get a, He did get a fingertip or two on it. If yeah, he, but if he would have jumped off the ground, he would have gotten an entire paw on it. But it, it was a floppy paw. Yeah, it didn't you know? There was no strength in that paw, and that was not a hard shot. I mean, that was. I mean, there was. A, it was a. It was more of an accurate shot. He he fired a far post and went far post. Yeah, but uh, I mean, yeah. it wasn't. It wasn't a hard driven hit by any means. No, no, work, and his work, work some of that wrist strength out, man. You know. Yeah, um, I've never thought of him as a guy that wore that hamburger helper gloves weekly. Mm-hmm. You know, so I was expecting a little more. Like, at least kind of chip it away, maybe. But, yeah, I mean, we asked him to come up with, and he did later with the double, triple save or whatever you Mm -hmm. want to call that. So he came up big later, kept kept the game at 1-0. Let's put that in hindsight, too. I mean, what was it? Musa ended up getting, like, uh, an elbow or something to his head. Should have been a foul before those two saves occurred. But, again, the the ref let everything go. Oh, yeah. I mean, a gangbang could have happened on the field, and he would he have not did occur it. on the field. What are you talking about? <laughs> so let's move to Dest. Um, I just give Dest a B minus. I thought he wasn't horrible. I thought he's better on defense than offense for once. 
And um, yeah, I thought his defense was actually pretty solid. Yeah, but it just it's not enough. It's not enough. And, you know, he I thought he tried to do he tried to do hero ball mm-hmm. a couple times when he didn't need to. He did, a lot, were, he did a lot of cutting in um, yep. when playing the simple ball probably would have been the easiest and best option. And where and then, are the guys that when he cuts in, he can lay the ball off to on the top of the box who can one time a shot? Rocket a one time shot. There never was anyone there. No one played that position. What the fuck? I mean, I don't know. When you cut in, usually there's somebody along the line outside the box that's open you can pass to. And there was one time and he decided not to pass it to the dude. But, you know, I don't know, Brett. I, I don't get it. I don't get that. Mm mm. Uh, Nobody shoots from outside the box for us anyway, so it doesn't make a difference. That's true, except for Dest. And I think he was trying to get that done tonight. Yeah, yeah it could have been. And, you know, another one of his left footers into the top left corner, but never got one off, really. And there was no one there to help when he did cut in. There were no open passes. And they clogged that shit up in the middle around Zardis. And then there was really, like, no Musa or McKenney coming in late that he could dip it off to. Um, Polisic certainly didn't, you know, try to find open space to receive the ball from Des in those situations. And then the one time he did, of course, shot blocked. So You know, uh, we'll get to Polisic later and everything, but I thought that uh, Polisic played a lot better when he got pushed into the midfield. Yeah. Um, yeah more so I did than too. he did as a winger, you know. Perhaps Although, something to consider, I guess. Yeah, but that, that was desperation hour, right? It was desperation hour, I agree. So they pushed him right behind Pepe, and they played like a 4-1, I think I mentioned it earlier, like a, a 4-1-1-1 with Pulisic playing behind Pepe. Although, Morris and Ariola were supposed to go back and play defense, so I don't know what you call that. I call it the desperation formation, I guess. Um, was a, we need a goal. We're going to throw in players and hope to God it works. Yeah, exactly. What did you give Dust? I didn't hear. Uh, yeah, I gave him a, bet. I gave him a B minus. Well. B, B minus range. That, All right. That particular. Yeah. Jedi, I'll let you go first. <clears throat> yeah. So, you know, oddly, Jedi, Jedi has become one of my uh, one of my favorite players recently. Me too. Yeah. Uh, his, his interviews where he has no shits given and he just says first thing that hits his mind i love it uh and then you know that that whole uh, i i pulled my hammy while doing my backflip uh celebration cracked my shit up when i finally saw it because uh, i didn't see it live i didn't recognize yeah it. i, I think i had to tell you yeah i told you about it yeah. you know so yeah no he he's absolutely becoming one of my favorite players and mind you he definitely needs to improve on crossing but yeah quite frankly i think I think one of the better options for him instead of laying it across him is to sort of cut it and then make a, a, a pass either to the top of the box or to somebody else instead of trying to lay it across because he can't lay it across for shit. I mean, even if he made a good cross, um, there. <laughs> he, he, the, yeah, I mean, Skunkhead's totally outnumbered mm-hmm. in the box. So what's the point? If he's there, what's, yeah. I mean, the chances that he's going to win it with three guys around him are small minimal to nothing and um uh, yeah so but yeah uh great uh yeah i gave him about i gave him a b minus i gave him a b i thought he was better than dest i thought his defense was better than, i thought he got back and saved her asses a couple times mm-hmm. um and generally i thought the way he played up the left wing was fine but man was it congested because like polisic mckenney and uh, Robinson or Jedi were standing like I don't know they were so smashed together there was no place to go yet they hammered that up the left wing all fucking second half they just kept trying it over and over and over again even though it wasn't working all right well I guess uh, you want to do that um my turn Richards I had I think Richards played pretty well um except for that first goal that was awful um second goal i think he was already out so can't blame him for that so i'm gonna give him a b minus i give him a b minus as well but i'm I'm trying to i'm trying to space or figure out what he did on the uh first goal well he and miles were completely unresponsive to that counter that quick counter 
They got fair, pl- fair play because I remember Miles stumbling and allow- allowing the the gap to grow. Yes, that um, too, that too. But yeah, I mean, they both got schooled. They got schooled. They got sent to fucking schools. What happened there? I feel like a lot of that, a lot of those plays outside of the final play. I think the one there was like uh, two, just one touch passes. Like literally, it was a, it was like a a, a play for the midfield. There was a, a pass, pass immediately, and then my, uh, Miles stumbled and they scored a goal. Yeah, so, I mean it's just it's it happened so quickly that I mean I don't know if better positioning on on Richards' part would have been better. I mean it may have been better, but I don't know. Well, we've seen John Brooks break up stuff like that before in the past. Um, to be in the right place, the right time, I guess. But I don't know. I think Zimmerman would have made better decisions in that point. So yeah, I don't. Would you give him? I gave him minus as well. Okay, Miles, I gave a C. Yeah, I thought he was poor. Um, that his play was not acceptable. Um, he was slow. He was lethargic. I, I don't think he recovered from the first goal. No. And yeah, he was not, he was out of position too much, frankly. Oh, and it's sad to say that because we're not busting him up. Well, we've been really positive yeah, about yeah. Miles. But, I was going to say, this has got to be the, the worst grade we've ever given him. <laughs> yeah, it is. There's no doubt about it. It is. Yeah. And this is the worst he's played. And I couldn't, like I said before, I, I couldn't believe guys were just, just flying by him. And that he couldn't recover. I almost was thinking, is he got like a hammy thing or what's going on? Why is he so slow all of a sudden? Because he's a fast guy. He's a very fast player. That's one of his great attributes. Maybe uh, maybe Canada was wearing ice skates and we're all wearing our shoes on ice. Who knows? Yeah. It was a crappy, yeah. hard plastic field. I don't even know how old. That it's fascinating that it's, it's, it's FIFA approved, but whatever. <laughs> well, I guess they don't have much choice. It's like playing in russia they have to have all those artificial fields too because it's hard to grow grass when six months out of a year it's you know under 40 degrees so um i get it but i wonder how old that field is i haven't looked up the type of turf it is either because there the, it does make a difference like the sounders turf is much different than the turf they played on well today. and yeah and in fairness, I guess when when I played uh, when I was in high when I was in grade school and high school and stuff like that, when we played indoor, we played on basically spray painted concrete. Yeah, so, I mean, there's absolutely a difference. And that, I'm not saying that that's what that was by any means. That was definitely better, but I don't think it was the equivalent that you see in the uh, like NFL stadiums nowadays. By yeah. by, by any stretch of the mind, right? Um, it- but I do think it was definitely a step or two below. Maybe like you know, a deck, a couple decades old, you know, it could be sure. because that's what it looked like. And that's the way the ball looked like it was bouncing to. So, uh, but I do have to say, yeah, back in the day when you had to play, it was like a thin layer of felt over concrete, <laughs> you know, and every time oh, you, you felt, down, you felt every hit too, man. You, yeah, you know, you strawberries did. up and down your thighs. Yo, I know <laughs> that was rough, man. That was yeah. real soccer, man. Yeah. If you went in for a slide, man, a slide tackle, you'd have like a strawberry the size of fucking uh, a paper plate on your hip the next day. Yep. Um, uh, all right. So good let's times. good times. Awesome times. <laughs> all right. So we did Miles and Richards. Let's go to Adams. Uh, you can start. I, I give Adams a B plus. I did too. Yeah. I thought he was fine. I don't yeah. think he's the problem. We're, he did everything he was he was supposed to do. So there's there were an occasional bad pass here and there, but I mean that's going to happen every game, for the most part. There's always going to be at least a couple bad passes. Yeah, um, but as a whole, he did well throughout the game. Yeah, yeah, no complaints about Adams complaining that he's injured, but that's not his fault. Um, McKenny, I gave McKenny a B. Um, I was fine with most of this play and the heading thing that almost went in. But I thought sometimes in the second half, he tried to do a little too much. And um, I get that there weren't guys open, too. So it's kind of, like I said, it's hard to grade this because yeah. is that Greg's fault or is it McKenney's fault that no one showed for the ball or showed for the ball? You know, when he had the ball and he put his foot on it and then he go, well, fuck it, no one's open. I'm just going to take it myself and take on three guys or two guys or whatever. 
Um, so yeah, B. Yeah, I yeah, the, the the dribbling and getting dispossessed a lot in the second half really downgraded me. So I gave him a B minus mm-hmm. because I thought he played well. I, I really did. I really thought he played well. He had the nice opportunity on goal that was unfortunately saved. Um, but as a whole, I mean, I thought that the, the, the second half where he, he just constantly dribbled, turned and cut, turned to cut, and then got stuck. Turned yeah. and cut, turned to cut, got stuck. Over and over and over again. Um, it's, it's, that, it's, that, it's that same thing we talk about politics, same thing we talked about a number of players. Is every, you just you start playing that hero ball in the sense where like I can make another touch here, I can make another touch instead of just playing the simple pass because that simple pass and then mind you as you said yeah the simple that's pass the may problem. not have been there all the time yeah but there was, was there had to have been a drop pass at some point to either Jedi or I mean, Richards or I, something just hoof the ball back to the goalkeeper if you have to but man he got dispossessed so often usually around two or three uh, Canadian uh, Canadian oppositions so I'm just yeah. like. Yeah, I had I had to, I had to ding him for it. Had to dock him for it. Yep, I get it. Uh, Musa, did Musa play today? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I was literally going to say that. Oh man, that's two games in a row, though. I know. Oh man, what happened? I don't know. Oh, no. I mean, the ball never was just never over there. He did a couple of things here and there, but as a whole, he did not do much. Yeah, and it's weird because there are other games we've watched with him where he he'll just zip by like two or three guys find some open space but again is that moose's fault well or is he constipated as well he looked constipated so in the in, in the el salvador game we talked about it where like for whatever reason he was he was uh playing too much defense he was way too far back and that could have been the difference between playing on the same side with uh with Pulisic and uh jedi and everybody's playing that same role. Because we, we talked about that same issue with Aronson when he played that role um, against El Salvador, the first game. Yeah. We, we like, that entire left side was so congested. And it's just too many people want to do the exact same thing. Yep. Yep. In, the, in, in it's today's so game, predictable. <laughs> in today's game, it was a little bit different because Musa played on both sides of the field. And I feel like he was he was more productive on the right side. Uh, that that has that's more to say on uh, um, probably with Dest and uh, this situation was Aronson, but even then looking at the difference, we always, we always talk about uh, Wea versus uh, Pulisic and how like Wea always stays up high and wide, and he opens it up, and Pulisic always cuts checks back in and he cuts more to the center. Yeah, you know, so two different ty- styles, but Aronson when he played on the right, he played just like Wea did. He played more out and wide. Yeah. And that opened it up for uh, for Dest and then whoever played on the right midfield. So again, that left side was just super congested because everybody was making that same that same movement, that same run, that same into space. Yeah, and I, I'm not saying that's exactly where Musa his <clears throat> great faltered by any means. Uh, I gave I gave him a B minus um, simply because I don't think he did anything wrong really. What did I give him? You didn't say anything yet. Oh, be my. You, 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 you asked if he if he even played. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I, I again, I don't think he did anything wrong, but he really didn't do much of anything. Period. Yep. And I know B minus might sound great, folks, but that's really close to a C, and a C is totally unacceptable. Yeah. That means you you Your came with mom calling you. What the yeah, fuck is exactly. a C? What is a C? <laughs> a C is bad. Uh, <laughs> Pulisic, um, my turn. Uh, I'm going to give him a C plus. I gave him a B minus. Man, you just going B minus across the board. I, 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 it was a B minus type of game. We, we, Dude, maintain, it, we may maintain the possession. We moved it around. We created <coughs> some opportunities, but not nothing, anything great by any means. And but for Pulisic's sake, you know, he did some good things here and there. He did, but he kept doing some there of the same the hero, things. There was still the hero ball. I agree. Yes, yeah. and if until he stops doing with that, he's just getting C's, C's for me. That's all. <laughs> Got to stop doing that shit, well, dude. I mean, I I, I don't know uh, if it's just that he's taking into consideration that like I play for a top tier team in EPL, and he's taking that in consideration. But I mean, his 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 biggest strength is not necessarily being on the ball at all times. 
his biggest strength comes from, you know, making that pass, running off the ball, and connecting in the box later. Finding open know? space. Yep. He did. He did it most recently. He did it against Mexico. That's how he got his goal. You know, he's yep. just. It's not that he was on the ball, but you know, he was off the ball completely, and then the the cross came in. He made the nice run, and that's that's his entire his entire career as a professional. His success came from playing off the ball, finding that open spot, and you know, getting a nice little kick in. You know, it's not nothing spectacular, but he cleans up a lot of shit. Yeah, and playing on the counter is really another one of his strengths. But since we don't ever play that way, now we got we will pass before we get over the half line. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we don't counter. We just don't do it. We don't know how to do it. We don't do it. We got all and... this pace up top, and we yep. don't push. We don't push. No, because we got to play a high block and play a high press. And I get that works. That might work and be squirrely against a really top team who doesn't, you know, really expect it. But everybody expects it now. Mm -hmm. So they're just going to play a low block and counterattack you. You got to be a little bit. But Greg already gave it away. He already said what was going to happen in his presser. I don't know, a week ago or whatever. Um, he's got he's got to change. And yeah. there, there's a, a tech, tech posted a, a lineup that he threw out for the Canada Canada game, um, like a day or two ago. And I go, well, you know, it's it's in a way. And he did, he did the uh, we did a three five three five two. I think his, oh, his lineup was pipe dream. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I go, well, it is an away game, and I'm sure there's going to be some fuckery, but I don't think it's going to be like that. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> and no. Then I, re- I responded the day I go, I go, well, I guess it's, uh, I guess it's uh, Zardis starting over Pepe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Speaking of pipe dreams, hold on. Hey. All right. He's All fixing right. a pipe, guys. He's, uh, he's got a, he's got a <laughs> sink that's dripping. <laughs> Yes, a dripping, a dripping, dripping pipe. pipe. Um, <laughs> sounds cool. <laughs> that sounds gross. All right. Um, <laughs> Aronson, uh, uh, let, I think it's your turn. Aronson, yeah. I gave him a B. I did too. I thought he gave his usual effort, yep. but, you know, it just didn't. He had some weird moments where could have been the surface where I'm not giving him excuses, but it just looked like he was off his game. So that's not an A performance from Aronson. And we've seen some A performances from well, Aronson. And, that wasn't one yeah. of them. Let, let's be frank. The, the field itself was not optimal for our playing style. Okay. And that's out of the way. We, we've known, like I said, we've known for weeks. We could have adjusted. Yeah. We did F- find a way to win. But but Find it is what it is, and yeah, I know it's there's gonna be some there's gonna be some messed up opportunities. There's gonna be some poor touches. That's gonna happen when you're playing on plastic like that. But yeah, yeah, no, I, I thought he did well a number of times. I thought he, I thought there were some instances where he he was dispossessed a little too easily. But uh, as a whole, I thought he, I thought he did okay. It's just yeah, nothing nothing got produced out of it, unfortunately. Yep. Zardis, I gave a C minus. Mm. I thought, what the fuck did he do? Nothing. And he didn't even get an open space. He didn't even provide himself and say, look, here, pass me the ball. And then when he got the ball and they did pass it to him, it bounced off of him like he was a brick wall. Like he had no control. He actually headed a ball in the second half when the ball came to him. He had a Easy header. And instead of just heading the ball oh, to Robinson, who was standing there wide open, he headed it over his head by out like five feet. and out of bounds. Yes. <laughs> this no, guy I forgot is all not about ready. that play until you just brought it up. Yeah. I, again, I, I stress, I stress. What 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 does he bring? What does he actually bring more so than Pepe? And what I'm intangible? Not, I'm yeah, not, I'm not bashing Zardis by any means. He he's 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 done well as a professional with Columbus. Sure. Uh, he's done okay for the United States national team. I mean, he has what, like, uh, like what, 16 goals in like 64 games or something like that? Not, yeah. not the world's greatest uh, 
the track record as far as gold production. And ten percent of those goals were accidental. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, yeah, again, and I we always I always joke around with Zard about Zardis in the sense I don't joke around with him because I don't talk about him. I mean, I don't talk to him <laughs> with him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you if you if you were to jump on the show, I'd absolutely joke around with him. But um, but yeah, no, the guy the guy the guy must dip his shoes in in cement before the game. Yeah, no, because touch. his first touch is usually not on par. By any means. And, you know, there was a time earlier this uh, last session, I think, was it Nations League or whatever, where, you know, we're like, wow. Yeah, well, some... we, yeah we're, holy crap. Was that Zardes that touched that? <laughs> you know? Yeah, we were like, it was that accident. Did he do that on accident? Or I think, was I think, he, bar- I think he borrowed another striker's shoes by accident. But, yeah. Like, he he was... dipped in the concrete by any means. But historically speaking and currently speaking. Yeah, his shoes are like laced with concrete because that ball touches and it bounces like seven yards away. And Greg really didn't give him, didn't put him in a spot to succeed, and um, so that's on Greg too. It is. Um, I mean, he he wanted a striker that was going to go up for every ball that could hold up the play. And I'm sorry, it's, it's, he didn't Zard- do any of Zard- that. Zardis brings the effort, and that's about it. Yeah, I mean, how many times does he come all the way back on defense? But the bigger question is, does he bring more effort than, say, DK? Or does he bring more effort than Sargent? Or does he bring more effort than Peacock? Do you really or want Pepe? a center forward playing in the your box on defense? I mean, I don't. I want my striker up the field. I don't know why he's coming back that far. <laughs> I mean, it didn't make any sense to me. But, you know. Yeah, it, was, it, was, it was, I don't know. I'm hoping. I'm hoping at some point that he opens his eyes. Uh, Berhalter opens his eyes. And, oh, and, his and, his, uh, and his eyes are wide open. I I, I want I want to make <laughs> sure I want to make sure that staring in the mirror. <laughs> I, been I, seeing only a handsome person. <laughs> <laughs> he sees me. What? No. I guess <laughs> you want to go that direction. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's just I don't know. It's. He's got to. He's got to acknowledge it at some point that maybe, no, maybe the maybe the, the quote unquote verticality that he's expecting from Sardis <laughs> is just not as productive as the I guess quote unquote non verticality of, of where the P Fox and the DKs. You know where were where were the lanes for him to run through to get the verticality? There weren't any. Well, so, the verticality works on our wingers, but they don't it. quite work with our strikers. Mm-mm. So the plain fact of the matter is Pepe should have started this game. And that was a huge mistake. Um, I'm not, not that, saying that we would win because of that, but I don't I'm not either, but we might I think have stood a better chance. We would have had more skill on the field. We would have had a player yeah. who had a better first touch, who could play with his back to goal, who could go up and get those headers when he's the only guy in the box. But we didn't have that today. No. And Pepe is taller than Zardis and he can jump higher than Zardis. So, and he might be faster than Zardis because Zardis does not look fast anymore to me. Hmm. Um, I, I don't know. I think he's lost his step. Uh, where were we? Uh, Zardis. Yeah. Okay. We're you done. Got all so, of our non-starters off. Do we really want to do those? The non-starters? I really, yeah, no, uh, I don't really I mean, know. Not really. I mean, did anybody stand out? Pepe did some things in his short spell, uh, 30, 20 minutes, excuse me. Yeah, Ari- uh, Ariola. I'd, had... I'd be happy to give Pepe a B. Yep, Ariola had a almost. Dude, his bicycle, bicycle. Uh, up and up until the part where he landed on his neck. Oh my! Dude, I God. thought he broke his neck for a second. Dude, you know, I... all props to him for going for that. But uh, as he landed, I go, "That's not how you're supposed to land on." That. No, oh, no. God. I couldn't uh, believe hope... how bad that was. Yeah. I hope literally that, I hope that's not going to be a resi- residual effect he's going to feel. When he was just Rough. laying down for I was like his neck might be broken. Dude, he's he has like he's not moving. <laughs> that's like, I know. Oh man. You know, we we we've given we definitely have given Pe- or, uh, Ariel his uh, his is you know, a bit of grief because yep. we've we've got better options, but I definitely don't want to see that occurring. And no, I don't want guys. I, I, I would have loved it. I would have loved to have eaten Crow in the sense that if, if he would have scored that to tie it for us, yep, I would have absolutely eaten the biggest amount of Crow. I would have too. 
I would scoops, be more than happy of to. It. So I feel I feel like that's the difference between us and most people in the sense that I'm more than happy to eat the crow. <laughs> I am too. I'll admit Double when it. I'm wrong. And then that yep. and saying that though, in, you're not wrong though. Him him scoring him scoring that goal wouldn't necessarily make us wrong. No, it wouldn't because I, I still stand firm that there are better players than him to be included. But yeah, I'll be happy. I'll be happy to say, yeah, dude, that was a great goal. Great for and him. He, and <laughs> he was probably offsides. No, he probably. wasn't, though. He wasn't. Yeah, they said that, but I rewatched it real quick. He looks nah. offsides to me. I, 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 I looked at uh, the replay, too. Oh. Mm-hmm. Agree to okay. disagree. Okay. <laughs> would have been nice if it would have gone in, though. It would have um, nice. It would have made, it would have warranted uh, the injury he probably picked up. Yeah, a massive kink in his neck. <laughs> As for bringing Cannon in, my dude, only question why, is why? Why? Well, dude, <laughs> why? We, we we were down a goal. We gotta <laughs> we gotta possess in the midfield. Why bring in Cannon? I don't get it. Why that not is... bring in somebody like Luca De La Torre? Yep. Yep. Would have or, seemed like an obvious choice, seeing that we need more progression forward. I'm not saying the final pass because we all know that uh, Tori's final pass is not there, quite frankly. It isn't, but I did but watch it, a video the other week of his last game um, before yeah. this window, and he made at least three passes that should have been finished. And yeah. the guys no, missed yeah, absolutely, everything. Absolutely. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, that's one that uh, that is funny because when we had had a huge conversation about it on Twitter about uh, his inclusion and stuff like that, and yeah. like seriously, just watch the game. He may not, he may not be. That might not be every game by any means, but the last game there was at least two goals that he should have he should have gotten assists for. At least one guy missed a total so sitter. It's 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 pretty it's pretty easy to say that the fact that he has zero goals and zero assists this season so far. The goals, sure, that's that's on him because you know he's the one that's going to score them. But the assists, that's requiring your teammates to actually put the ball away. And you can put them in the perfect, the most perfect position ever, and they may not put it away, which yep. we saw. So I don't know that that argument right there is a uh, faulty. But in a game where we need to maintain the possession, especially in the midfield, and move it forward, I think not including not including uh, De La Torre, in one of your five subs was a misuse. Dude, that guy's never going to get to play, I don't think. I, I, I stand firm that I go, it's, it's such a shame because, you know, he may not necessarily get to play this this, this cycle. But he can Maybe break next lines. Cycle. Maybe next <laughs> cycle. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But well, unless, I mean, unless Berholder gets resigned. Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> could be. I mean, we'll see um, how they react when we go three and out um at the next world cup um and <laughs> presuming we make it which we should mathematically things are looking pretty good right now even though we just lost but there's no hope of nine points well, there's I mean, no hope of seven points yeah. that's over it's out the window now we need six and if let's say we flop one against honduras at home mm. in the frozen tundra of minnesota whoa dude then there's going to be a real issue i mean this is one of those games is Wednesday game is going to be so high pressure for Greg. Like he cannot lose that game. He seriously can't I'm not saying his job's going to be at risk, but it could be. No, I mean, I'm sorry, but going into the last window, it's not, he could lose that game and he's still going to be the coach. It's not going right. to change. It's not going to change. You're right. But the crowds of people calling for his elimination uh, as manager, they're going to grow. And uh, they're already pretty big as it is. So it's just going to get worse for him. Um, I mean, you're always going to have the guys that are going to defend, you know, every time, you know, Burhalter bounces a ball to a guy for a throw in and say, <laughs> look how good he is. Look how good. At the very is. minimum, it's good for content. And he look, <laughs> listen, this is a guy who really knows his mugs. You know, and his shoes. Okay, great. I just want him to know the game, and I want him to make adjustments when it's necessary. Um. Oh, that's so funny because uh, uh, Filippo texted me before the show today, and um, he said, 
So yeah, bring some positives and negatives. So here are my positives I wrote down, but didn't get to say during the show. Adams is captain. <laughs> <laughs> he was um, back. I agree. Um, they wore my favorite all white kits. <laughs> I love those kits. I love the simple mm-hmm. white with the with the badge. Um, I didn't have any others. I mean, what am I going to say? Oh well. What I'm going to do what Greg does? We had all the possession. We had more shots. We had more more higher expected goal rate. Expected goal rate, and you didn't reach the expected yeah. goal rate. That's there's, a negative, dude. There's there's a reason why in in all the sports around the world that in soccer that the bulk of the community hates arguments based off of stats. Yes. Because it doesn't mean shit. Michael Sometimes. Wilbon being one of them in particular. <laughs> yeah. It's just, you know, there, there's a difference between saying like, uh, oh, you're you're playing it's the American football and you have more passing yards, but, you know, mm. the opposition's defense comes up late in the end, you know, compared well, you to say, have... us maintaining possession for 70% of the game, but failing to actually complete a, a, a successful shot on goal. Well, what do they say? Possession for possession's sake. Yeah. That's what it was. Nothing happened, guys. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it, you watch a game, just watch it. It's how many, how many touches do you think our defense had more than our offense? Yep. It was just pass back, pass round, pass round, and pass then round, pass round. Push the, forward, oh, the, lose possession. Pass round, that, pass round. That, pass that round, gal round. interviewed Greg at halftime, and Greg said, Yeah, we just need to be more patient. No. No, no, that's not the solution is to be more patient. It already looks like we're being patient and it's getting us nowhere. How about some urgency? How about some, you know, maybe longer balls through alleys? How yeah. about a- another approach? How about getting desperate before there are only 10 minutes left in the game and you're down to 10 players? I'm hoping I'm hoping one day that, that somebody goes to interview Berhalter and they're like, at halftime, they're going to be like, well, well, what do you think we need to do in order to turn this game around? And he goes, we need heart. We need heart. And then, uh, you know, Keanu Reeves pops up at the halftime and saves oh. the game. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. But apparently the real answer is let's jam it down the left wing for 20 minutes straight. Right wing's not doing right it. Way. We're going to try it on the left. Nope, <laughs> nope. We're going to back on the we're right. Gonna, we're going to force this Pulisic uh, getting in the game thing. Um, so, Greg, don't try to change the way the world views U.S. soccer. How about you try to change the way we play soccer? How do you right? change the way that we view U.S. play soccer? Well, that would be next on the list. I mean, you I know, mean, but, but can how, we start how, with how we, we start with past, playing years, first? Yeah. Years pass. It was almost a guarantee. Again, every every cycle, if we weren't first ahead of Mexico or just behind Mexico, we would be, we'd be shitting our drawers. Yep. You know? Well, Last ba- year, we didn't qualify. This year, we're still in second place. Don't get me wrong, but we're heading we're heading into the Honduras game. Hopefully, we get the three points there, move forward. But then we're heading into a window where we have Costa Rica and Mexico away yep. and Panama at home. So I guess the good news there is that we is there, have how what is there good news? I yes, didn't know there was I will any. say all three games matter because those are those are three of the top four teams. So it's all in our hands. We're not relying on other people to get results. Wouldn't you know? it be better if they didn't matter and we are already in? No, I 100 percent agree <laughs> with that. I'm not. <laughs> I'm, I'm putting into consideration where we're currently at. <laughs> <laughs> well i can't yeah. change i can't change that as much as i'd love to try but i can't no there's only so much you can do all right we're going to end this segment and we're going to bounce and try to predict uh in segment three even though we're thoroughly fucking waxed at this point we're going to try to predict the starting 11 um for the next game against honduras and wish us well because we're doing it three days out and we don't really know who's hurt and who's not hurt we're going to just try our best until next time on straight red card make sure you like subscribe share it with grandma and we'll be back <laughs> <laughs> <That hurt. laughs>